Cerebral palsy, also called CP, is a term for a group of disabilities that affect children in the first few years of life. Children who have CP have trouble controlling their muscles and coordinating body movements. They may have stiff or weak muscles, which can cause them to make unusual muscle movements. Babies who have CP may take longer than usual to start rolling over, sitting up, crawling, smiling, or walking. CP is caused by irregular formation or damage to the brain that interferes with muscle control and coordination. The brain damage that causes CP can occur before the child is born, during birth, or in the first few years of life. In most cases, CP is present at birth. Normally, the brain sends out messages telling the body exactly how to move and exactly when to move. Children who have CP have damage to the part of the brain that sends out these messages. This affects the way a child with CP talks, walks, and moves. Some causes of CP include certain infections in pregnant mothers, such as rubella or chickenpox, can increase the risk of brain damage in the developing baby. Sometimes the baby's brain does not develop properly while in the womb. Doctors don't know why this happens, but in some cases it can be associated with the mother's exposure to certain toxic substances. A difficult labor or delivery. This can happen if there is a lack of oxygen in the baby's brain during birth. Severe jaundice that is left untreated in newborns can also result in CP. Meningitis or viral encephalitis. Meningitis causes inflammation of the membranes surrounding the brain and the spinal cord, while viral encephalitis causes inflammation of the brain. Brain injuries during the first few months or years of life. The brain damage that causes CP can occur before the child is born, during birth, or in the first few years of life. In most cases, CP is present at birth. Normally, the brain sends out messages telling the body exactly how to move and exactly when to move. Children who have CP have damage to the part of the brain that sends out these messages. This affects the way a child with CP talks, walks, and moves. Risk factors for CP include infection, such as rubella in a pregnant mother, problems with blood circulation in the brain before birth, abnormal brain development, premature birth or low birth weight, babies in a feet first or breech position at the beginning of labor, difficult labor and delivery or delivery of multiple babies, exposure to toxic substances in a pregnant mother, such as maternal drug or substance abuse or chemicals such as methylmercury, severe jaundice in newborns, infections in the baby after birth, such as bacterial meningitis, head injuries after birth. CP can be mild or severe. A child who has mild CP may have awkward movements, but they may require little or no assistance. A child who has severe CP may not be able to walk, may have trouble speaking, and may require lifelong care and assistance. There are three types of CP. Spastic CP is the most common form of CP. It causes the muscles to stiffen and makes movement difficult. Spastic CP can affect just one side of the body, both legs, or both arms and both legs. Athetotic CP is not as common as spastic CP. It causes uncontrolled, slow body movements and affects the entire body. Ataxic CP is the least common form of CP. Ataxic CP affects balance and coordination. Some children will show signs of more than one type of CP. This is referred to as a mixed form of CP. The symptoms of CP usually do not get worse over time. Symptoms may include stiff muscles or muscles that are too floppy, uncontrolled movements, lack of coordination, difficulty walking, for example, one foot or leg may drag. Difficulty with fine motor control. For example, difficulty with writing or buttoning a shirt. Difficulty speaking, swallowing, or eating. Excessive drooling. Seizures. Children who have CP sometimes have other health problems. These can include problems with vision, problems with hearing, or developmental delays. Other health effects may include orthopedic problems. These may require managing curvatures in the back, hip dislocations, ankle and foot deformities, and contracted muscles to avoid atrophy or pain and promote the maximum amount of mobility and strength. 
There is no cure for CP. If your child has CP, your doctor will help you create a treatment plan that may include physical therapy. Exercise and muscle training will help your child with balance, flexibility, coordination, and strength. Physical therapy can also help your child learn to use crutches, braces, splints, or a wheelchair if necessary. Speech therapy. A speech therapist can help your child with speaking or sign language, swallowing, and eating. Occupational therapy. This type of therapy teaches your child how to help take care of themselves. It can help teach your child to perform daily activities at home or school. It also helps your child learn or improve fine motor skills, such as writing. Rehabilitation. Positioning aids. These can be used to help the child sit, lie, or stand. Braces and splints can be used to prevent deformity and to provide support or protection. Medicine. Your doctor may prescribe muscle relaxants to ease muscle stiffness. If your child has seizures, your doctor may also suggest an anticonvulsant medicine. Surgery. Your doctor may recommend surgery if your child's muscles or tendons are very stiff and limit the range of motion in the arms and legs. Treatment for CP is generally provided in a team-based approach, enlisting a variety of professionals to meet the needs of the child. The cost of treatment varies for individuals based on severity of condition and types of services required. Insurance plans may vary in the amount of treatment costs covered, and supplemental security income is a governmental resource for children who meet disability and income qualifications. Cerebral palsy clearly presents hurdles to both the family and their child. Particularly stressful milestones include the diagnosis and conflicting emotions it brings, transitioning a child of school age into specialized education, and adjusting to the social and physical turbulence of the adolescent years. As parents age, they may face a new set of concerns regarding their child's future. However, with support, care, and love, the family facing cerebral palsy has many opportunities for happiness and success. Since CP is a lifelong condition that is not correctable, management includes focusing on preventing or minimizing deformities and maximizing the child's capabilities at home and in the community. Positive reinforcement will encourage the child to strengthen his or her self-esteem and promote as much independence as possible. The full extent of the problems are usually not completely understood immediately after birth, but may be revealed as the child grows and develops. Individualized Education Programs, or IEPs, are available through schools to children with special needs. These programs are created through collaboration of school members, specialists, and parents. Through IEPs, children may receive special education classes or some other form of specialized education support. This support from teacher's aides and or smaller class sizes help children to adjust to and learn in a school setting. Also, the use of proper devices, such as hearing aids, glasses, or positioning devices, and assistive technology as needed will help your child in a school setting. The severity of CP may determine the extent to which a child may participate in physical education or co-curricular activities. However, current efforts by the U.S. Department of Education are working to increase physical and extracurricular opportunities appropriate for children with disabilities. The most frequently asked questions by parents whose child has been diagnosed with cerebral palsy express concern and anxiety about their child's future. The parents of children with CP face many challenges, including emotional and physical demands. Like any parent, parents of children with CP will find that optimism, blended with realism, is the best approach to raising any child. With support, assistance, extra time and accommodations, most children with cerebral palsy can enjoy a full and active life. CP is not a degenerative disease and therefore symptoms do not generally become more severe with age. Type and severity of the condition will determine the amount of independence the child will have in the future. Many individuals with CP are ambulatory and are able to work and live independently. Others may be able to live on their own with varying levels of assistance, such as is provided by a home health aide. University of Chicago Adoption Center partners with families to provide compassionate, state-of-the-art care to children with cerebral palsy. 
the Adoption Center can assist with both pre-adoption and post-adoption evaluations and assessments, and even provide in-country advice when necessary. The University of Chicago Medicine Comer Children's Hospital gives the Adoption Center access to the highest quality pediatric infectious disease subspecialty care. The five-visit structure helps families welcome a new child into their home while synthesizing disease-specific information and integrating the care of this child into normal family life. After the Adoption Center's five adoption visits, your family may choose to continue on with us or transition to a local community provider. Families who choose to move on to a local community provider will receive a transitioning packet for the pediatrician, giving a background to your family's story. If needed, our team is able to provide longer care relationships, especially for children with cerebral palsy or other significant special needs for chronic health concerns. In addition to serving as liaison to referring specialists at Comer, our team also provides checkups to monitor your child's progress if needed. Whichever path your family takes, know that you can always come home to Comer. <laughs>